which is well doing and welcome back to after they found Atlantis today we're talking about where we're looking for things in archaeology if I were to say that Atlantis I have Atlantis somewhere or it might be somewhere it might be not pick a hand okay there well it's not in there now you're gonna say what how about the other hand well you can't sorry about that we can't we can't look here we can't look there why because this is this is sacred ground there is there might be uh, uh, sacred burials here or it's 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 to the indigenous people we might disturb the graves or there's a military base there and we can't we can't search there or it's been the area has been flooded uh, by a dam and we can't get in there and look or it's just too ridiculous why should we even look there it's it's too far underwater there's there's no way that there could be a, any ruins there because it's just too far underwater that that doesn't make any sense and the list goes on and on and this is the problem because it all depends on where we're looking. Now, what I offer to these people who say that the Atlantis does not exist, a lot of these archaeologists, is that, okay, let, let's go look. I want to go look where we haven't looked yet. Let's go look where we haven't looked yet. Now, one of the places I want to start off, I can tell you right off the bat, is the what they call the sunken city off of Cuba, off of western Cuba. Um, it was discovered in 2000, and this has been 22 years later that we have not gotten down there and looked at it. National Geographic was a part of it at first. They were looking like they were going to do it. I remember this. This is, this is 22 years ago. I remember this happening. And I was like, okay, National Geographic's on it. They're going to they're gonna get down there and, and check it out. But guess what? They have not been back. They have, they have not been back to check it out. And today we're going to be looking at things on the bottom of the ocean. Who knows what they might be, but they're definitely anomalous. So let's get started and check it out. This article was published more than 20 years ago. The team that discovered the ancient structures under the sea near Cuba is led by an offshore engineer, Paulina Zelitsky, a naturalized Canadian who was born in Odessa. Her son, Ernesto Tapanes is Chief Financial Officer and Operations Director of their business, while husband Paul Weinswag handles the media and public affairs side. Mr. Weinswag, the son of Toronto composer John Weinswag and novelist Helen Weinswag, is a former professor of sociology and philosophy at Trent University. Using their collective smarts and in partnership with Fidel Castro's government, the trio head Advanced Digital Communications, a company that is exploring Cuban waters for treasures, archaeological and golden. So what they did discover in Cuba? The ADC discovered the USS Maine. In 2000, the wreck of the Maine was discovered by Advanced Digital Communications, a Toronto-based expedition company, in about 3,770 feet of water roughly three miles northeast of Havana Harbor. The ship was sunk in 1898 while it was resting in the Havana Harbor. And so what they did, it had been there for a while, so they ended up building a coffer dam, it's called, around this, around the harbor, and they were able to get the ship up, USS Maine, and then they scuttled it in 1912 off the coast of Havana, Cuba. And there it laid at the bottom of the sea until it, the ADC discovered it. Now this is important because it proves that the ADC had the technology to identify a ship like the USS Maine at these extreme depths. And how did they identify it? Their cameras. The expedition was able to identify the ship due to the doors and the hatches on the wreck as well as the anchor chain, the shape of the propellers, and the holes where the bow was cut off. Due to the raising of the ship, the wreck was completely missing its bow. The team unveiled videotape of the battleship, its port side furrowed into the sand where it was scuttled in 1912. Pictures of the vessel's superstructure, propeller, stern, and hatch, and tow chain matched old photographs of the ship. So that's how they knew what ship it was. And Zelitsky said 
She and her company, Advanced Digital Communication, want to become the deep water experts off Cuba. Mrs. Zelitsky, 56, and Mr. Weinswag, 58, met in the mid-1980s in Ottawa. Mrs. Zelitsky, who was fluent in three languages, had already had a distinguished career in marine engineering. She had worked in Cuba at a submarine base installation in the late 1960s. So this is an important little detail here that Paulina Zelitsky is a marine engineer and she worked in creating submarine bases. Now it's a little known fact that the first thing that the ABC discovered when they found this mega area it's called in Cuba, they named it the mega area because of the megaliths down there. They called it because all the large stones, they called it the megalith, so it's called mega. But when they first come up onto the mega area, there was a submarine there. We saw a huge submarine, very large submarine. We don't know whose submarine, but it was right there in area on ocean bottom. They had stumbled upon modern military activity in progress, but their encounter was brief. The submarine moved away before it could be identified. But a little later, their side scan sonar lights up with another startling image. The graphics were, uh, had symmetry and, and geometry and architecture to it, uh, things that did not look natural. The structures looked man-made, almost like something out of a James Bond movie. We decided that it's probably something related to submarines. Maybe it is a world underwater submarine uh, terminal, you know, very large, really large one, like international airport. <laughs> they take the data back to their laboratory for analysis. For months, Zelitsky plows through the scientific literature, trying to find an explanation for what they have found. Every day, I studied for six, eight hours. The six months later, I lifted my face to the wall, and there was this Mayan calendar. The Mayan building on the calendar appears to match the images on the side scan sonar. To her eyes, the underwater formation has a similar layout to ancient Mayan cities in Central America. Could the objects be man-made? Curious to learn more, Weinswag and Zelitsky sail back to the site. This time, they send down a submersible camera. The images they capture are highly unusual. There are regular shaped rocks, some of them forming structures almost 150 feet high, and they stretch over an area of eight square miles. These artists' impressions, based on the side scan sonar, reveal what the structures might look like. They appear man-made, but geologist Robert Schock is not so sure. Okay, so now here's an article from 2002 regarding the subject. As Zelitsky and her husband Paul Weinswag watched the screen, the empty plain of seabed suddenly gave way to images of massive geometric shapes, apparently cut from stone. As more shapes came into view, some stone appeared to be cut into blocks, and some blocks seemed to be perfectly aligned. They appeared to form corridors and the outlines of rooms, the two scientists said. There were round stones and pyramid-shaped ones, too. They are interesting anomalies, but that's as much as anyone can say right now, said John Ekev, senior editor of National Geographic magazine who traveled to Cuba to study the sonar images. But I'm no expert on sonar, he said. And until we are able to actually go down there and see it, it will be difficult to characterize them. 22 years later. In July 2001, the summer after the discovery, they returned to the site with geologist Manuel Eteraldi, senior researcher of Cuba's Natural History Museum. They sent down a remotely operated vehicle to examine and videotape the structures. 
Images sent back by the ROV confirmed the presence of large blocks of stone, about 8 feet by 10 feet, some circular, some rectangular, some in the shape of pyramids. Some blocks appeared deliberately stacked atop one another, others appeared isolated from the rest. But wait, there's more. This is from another article around the same time. And listen to this. Moreover, an anthropologist affiliated with the Cuban Academy of Sciences has said that still photos were taken from the videotape clearly show symbols and inscriptions. Mr. Weinswag said it is unknown in which language the inscriptions were written. He said that the sonar images bear an amazing resemblance to the pyramid design of the Aztec and the Mayan temples in Mexico. So there was writing, guys. There was actually inscriptions on some of these things that they could see with their cameras. They videotaped it. But wait, there's more. It is not known how old the underwater site is. However, Cuban archaeologists found a megalithic structure located on the west coast of Cuba in 1966. This structure was close to the underwater discovery. Based on that and other geological information, we're speculating that these are over 6,000 years old, he explained. It's not exact, but they're very ancient. So, are you guys still with me? Well, if you are, how would you like to go for a ride in the submarine? Let's check out this uh, little video here of the, what it's like to be down there in that submarine. And see what you think of some of these things here.
Okay, are we noticing how the picture suddenly got blurry? So this is the only kind of, they're saying that is like the only thing that's uh, uh, abnormal. And as you can see, the camera all of a sudden got blurry. You can't even read the writing on the, uh, like the VCR display. But there it is. There's, there's like a little square thing in there. So, um, hmm. I don't want to wonder, I wonder what that is. Maybe somebody dropped a, dropped a slab of marble or something over the, over the boat or something, right? But uh, it is that is peculiar. It's 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 just, it's it's interesting how it, the camera suddenly went blurry right there. But uh, yeah, this is the bottom of the ocean down there, guys, and uh, it would be uh, fun to go check it out. What some people see is pyramids, maybe other types of buildings, maybe some kind of regular pattern suggesting some kind of urban layout, maybe if you want to call it a city. Very interesting, very intriguing. But is it definitive? I don't think so. I'm not convinced that they're artificial, much less Atlantis. But do I leave the possibility open? Yes, it deserves a lot more investigation.